Okay, so our second video uh, starts with a simple question. What is rationality? Well, rational behaviour is something that's assumed in many economics textbooks. And you'll come across this early in your economics course at A-level. It's a decision-making process that is based on making decisions and choices, oftentimes many choices in, in a single day, that result in the optimal benefit or perhaps the maximum utility, the maximum satisfaction for an individual. Now, we assume rational behaviour, even though we know that systematic and persistent deviations from rational choice are actually an important, some people say an inevitable feature of the, of the messy real world we live in. Uh, a quick look at some of the assumptions, the assumptions of rational behaviour. Uh, the first assumption is that consumers choose independently. So my preferences for a particular type of drink or what type of food to order off a menu, uh, my preferences for which film to go see at some point if the cinemas reopen, my preferences do not affect your choices. You make an independent choice. I'm sure you can think about how you can challenge that assumption. Uh, second assumption is that a consumer has fixed and consistent preferences. So if A is preferred to B, and B is preferred to C, then normally A will be preferred to C. We also assume uh, that people gather complete full information on all of the alternative choices they have, and given this full information, uh, they're able to make the calculations and uh, make an optimal choice given their preferences. Now these are some of the key assumptions of rational behaviour, uh, and uh, those people who meet those conditions in the economics textbooks are often called econs. Econs are people who essentially inhabit economics textbooks, as opposed to another breed uh, called humans. And we'll make a distinction between the two in this course, in this short course in behavioural economics. So how do we describe the, the behaviour of rational econs, these mythical creatures? Well, first of all, they are willing and able to calculate every single cost and benefit. You know, they're going around the supermarket, as I was this morning. Uh, their brain is working overtime, calculating the cost and benefit of every purchase, uh, every, every selection of vegetables and fresh foods. They are cold calculating machines. Econs also have a very strong brain power. In fact, they can compute probability, they understand risk, uh, they can do the calculations uh, pretty easily. That's certainly not true of me. Uh, and crucially, in, uh, econs tend to have no emotion. They tend to, they tend to be cold, calculating machines. They often assume they feel no emotion. And crucially, they feel no regret from previous decisions. Well, that's essentially the behaviour of rational econs. They tend to be unemotional, calculating individuals, fully able to resist temptation. So they don't necessarily choose the thing that gives them the immediate satisfaction they can think into the future. They're objective rather than subjective. They focus on costs and benefits. Don't bring anything else into the into the decision, into the calculus. They make fully informed decisions, taking into account all the information, and often we assume they're selfish and self-interested. They aim to maximise their own utility and not that of, of others within a group or a social network. And crucially, they're independent in making choices. They're not influenced or shaped in any way by any social networks. Well, looking at this slide, uh, I'm sure that if you're getting into your behavioural economics already, you'll be able to challenge and question each of those. And we'll do that, of course, in the lessons still to come. Here's an interesting question which I was thinking about just the other day. When do you stop eating a jar of Pringles? Uh, it's a question which, to which I return quite often. Once you open them, it's quite difficult to stop. Uh, in, in economics, we say that as you consume more of something, uh, there could be uh, a diminishing marginal benefit or a marginal gain. So the marginal benefit is the satisfaction you get from that next Pringle or that uh, that next handful of crisps. Now, if the, if the law of diminishing marginal utility holds true, uh, then our willingness to pay for something goes down as consumption rises. The rational consumer will be tempted by low prices because they can equate the cost of purchase with marginal benefit. I'm not necessarily suggesting everybody does this, but try eating something you quite like, a Jaffa cake perhaps, or uh, some crisps or something. Try and eat a crisp every minute and write down on a scale of 0 to 10 how much enjoyment you get from it. 
Don't go too far, but see if the law of diminishing marginal utility holds true. In the, the next lesson, we'll look at irrationality. But this was a quick look at rational thinking.